Welcome to the local campaign, and thank you for joining us for our debate today in Ward 3, Barhaven. We're going to introduce the candidates who are here for the debate in just a moment, but first, I'll quickly walk through the rules for our debate today. In the next hour, we will see opening statements from each of the candidates, one minute in length. We drew the order for those opening statements at random just a few minutes before our telecast. Then we'll move to a series of debates of the uh, issues that are important to Barhaven residents and people throughout Ottawa. To start each discussion, I will direct a question to one of the candidates. That candidate will have 45 seconds to respond to that question on his or her own, and then we'll open it up to all the candidates for several minutes of debate during which they can challenge each other, uh, ask each other questions, offer their own viewpoints, and get into a free-flowing discussion about that particular topic. After that debate is over, we'll go back to the candidate to whom the question was originally directed, and that candidate will have 30 seconds to wrap up on that topic. We'll move through a number of different topics that way, five or six different issues, and then we will wrap up with closing statements, once again, one minute in length, and we'll do those in the reverse order of the opening statements. So let's meet the candidates who are here seeking your vote in Ward 3, Barhaven. They are Franklin Ipape, Hattie Wess, Atik Qureshi, and Jan Harder. There is one other candidate who is on the ballot in Ward 3. He is Ahmad Malgare, and he is not here for the debate. So let's begin with the opening statements. Again, one minute in length, and we'll start with Franklin Ipape. Go ahead. Hello, bonsoir. Mon nom est Franklin Ipape. I've been living in the world for a couple of years now. I'm a father of three. I'm a husband. I'm a teacher at the French school called Cité Collégia. I have a nursing company called Ben Service de Santé, so I'm a nurse as well. Why am I running? Because it's time for a change in the world. I've been sitting in a couple of different associations. You have SICAN Cooperation Integration Canada, where we, come, we welcome new arrivals. In Nipin, in my kids' school, I'm in the board as well. We need a counselor that will listen to us, pay attention to us, and that will have the same view like us. It's time for a change. A lot has been done in Barreven. A lot has been done. But it's time to have something different and something better. Reason why I'm here today. I congratulate everybody running because it's tough. You need time to do that. It's the love for the world. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up is Hattie West. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Bonsoir tout le monde. Uh, avant que je commence, je voudrais reconnaître qu'on est sur le, sur le, le territoire algonquin non cédé. Uh, many thanks to Roger, Stevie, and Mark for hosting this debate and to the colleagues that are joining us tonight. My name is Hattie West, and I'm running to become the next city councillor for Barhaven Ward 3. I am a radio anchor, I'm a TV host and community producer. I served as the president of the Student Federation of the University of Ottawa. I also served as the national francophone chairperson. Throughout my different roles, I held different experiences and uh, I, I gained a lot of experiences and knowledge and skills that enabled me to serve my community. And tonight, I'm transferring all these experiences to serve our community, Barhaven. I am a firm believer in consultation. While canvassing, my platform has come down to two major priorities, infrastructure and fiscal management that is responsible. I will save that for tonight to talk all about, but I'm very excited to be amongst all of you and, uh, and uh, talk about the issues that are related to our work. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up is Atik Qureshi. Go ahead, you have one minute as well. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Rogers. Thank you, my viewers. My name is Atik Qureshi. Living in Ottawa since 2006. Happily married for 16 years, father of two energetic teens. Why I decided to run for city councillor? I strongly believe that city desperately need cost-effective solutions. Over the past 22 years, I have worked in the financial industry budgeting, financial management, consolidations, tax consultancy. Throughout my experience, I have learned, implemented, and generated cost-effective solutions. I am a teacher and mentor to Ottawa U and Carleton University students as a co-op employer. I always think out of the box and go beyond norms. This is not only the key of my success, but helps to build relationship with the community. Our community needs better transit system safer roads, and better town planning. I will be the new voice for the community and looking for your support. Thank you. All right, thank you. Finally, Jan Harder. Go ahead, you have one minute. 
Hi, I'm Jan Harder, and I've been honoured to represent Bar Haven on City Council for over 20 years. I work hard every day representing you and your family. Bar Haven has seen many wins over the years, but these wins only come from a representative who has the leadership, experience and commitment to make these <coughs> gains reality. It's easy to promise the world in an election season when you have no record to run on. My record of public service has results, real results. I have delivered on roads, new recreation facilities, attracted new jobs and brought significant public investments like fire stations and the soon to be constructed Barhaven Police Station to our community. In fact, I even recommended the location. As an experienced and respected member of council, I'm committed to bringing LRT to Barhaven, keeping taxes low and, and predictable building and, inter and interchange at Barnesdale Road and continuing to make life more convenient for you and your family. I have deep roots in Barhaven. I'd be honored to continue serving you. On Monday, November 22nd, I'm asking for your support. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, let's turn to some debates now on the important issues in the municipal election campaign. I'll start with a question to Franklin E. Pape. Uh, we've learned, of course, over the last week or two that phase one of light rail is facing further delays uh, and that some of the costs that uh, result from those delays may be borne by the city. It hasn't been determined yet. Do you think city council should have overseen this project more carefully and what can be done differently for phase two and phase three? You've got 45 seconds. Yes, thank you. This is a huge problem right now, and all the city is talking about it because we live in a dream that's becoming a nightmare. I definitely call it a nightmare because we have no guarantee that on the month of February it will be running. We'll be dreaming about that. We'll, we'll see in the trains, but we don't have access to the train yet. Yes, the city has to tell us. The city has to tell us. People have to be accountable. The communication is bad and really bad. We've been hoping about this LRT, but today we don't have it yet. So we, we, it's definitely very important for us to know what's happening because the information has been hidden. Councillors sitting on the table, we don't have the real information of what's happening right now. Are we going to have it in February? We have no guarantee. Three. Okay. It's open to everyone now. You can keep going if you like, yes. and then everyone else can jump after in. Three, after like. three report is a big issue. May, November, now hoping in February. So I think it's a time for the city to, be, to make people have to be accountable on that. Well, we definitely have uh, communication on it. In fact, at every Finance and Economic Development Committee meeting, which I sit on, um, John Manconi gives a very in-depth uh, report. I can tell you he was flabbergasted a week ago Friday to when he got the call from the consortia that said that they were not going to be able to make the new deadline. It was a shock to him and it certainly was a shock to us, but fortunately a few days later, in fact three days later, we were meeting as a committee and we had all that new, new information before us. I think we're, we're talking about a delay um, for the past couple of years, it's been a huge concern, but. Uh, I don't think that delay makes a huge difference to, to, difference to the residents of Barhaven when we talk about us not experiencing LRT probably until uh, 2031, actually. Uh, there are multiple reasons. I know that the LRT actually is the biggest accomplishment in infrastructure that Ottawa has ever had in its history. Uh, by the time that it's fully implemented, we will not have just uh, implemented a solution that's more sustainable and aims for a greener city, but also we will have a safer and, uh, and a more reliable option for everyone. Yeah, I don't, but, know, I, I don't understand where you are coming up with the number of 2031. In fact, within two weeks, we're going to have a report on the Barhaven LRT from baseline to um, the marketplace station that's going to be before the Transportation Committee. I've uh, reviewed that report. It's very thorough. Uh, it uh, is cost-effective and it's going to be delivering that um, status of work uh, to uh, members of council and uh, certainly to members of um, Ottawa, people in Ottawa. It's something that the mayor and I very much support and I'm looking forward to, uh, to that work starting. For me, it are, is, uh, LRT is out of question for Barhaven since 2006 and there's no alternate solution to that. If we are looking at the current study over the Woodrow, we have a huge population on down the road, uh, north of uh, uh, Hunt Club. Will they dig a tunnel over there? Or will they run uh, elevated uh, uh, way over there? It's I a think. huge cost. Well, that's and I have an alternate work, right? solution for this. And I am coming up with an alternate solution. Because Barhaven, uh, we have a, VRL is available there. 2017, 
uh, we are looking for alternate okay. uh, financial. Well, now, 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 now unfortunately, we, you're being we foolish on the Via Rail. Via Rail only owns the only track that they own exclusively in Canada is from the Quebec border to Smith Falls, and they value that. In fact, they want to incre increase beyond the very large number of services that they have daily. They are not out going to allow ever anyone else to use that but track. They are looking for alternate. Uh, uh, they want looking not for dual carriage. Track. They Absolutely want dual not. carriage. They want speed up the, the, their carriage. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not. From Toronto to Ottawa, and we, we visited and that in 2000. Actually, and we have to sit on the table. We have to find where the hurdle is. We have will to. Will you find that the, table to sit at? Of course, I will do. That's I why I'm you will. Hurdle, I will run. With all due That's respect, Councillor Hurd, I think the issue is. Um, you said basically, let's go back a little bit to history. You sat uh, on, uh, on uh, the council in 2006 that voted on the cancellation of the North oh, South. Let me finish if yeah, I, I could, am, please. I'm, I'm uh, waiting for this because this is one of the stories Absolutely. you're telling at the door that's Absolutely. a lie. So I'll listen uh, to so this. So, anyways, we, that was cancelled back in 2006. Uh, you supported that decision, obviously. But the other problem, too, is that we have to look for is that the environmental okay. assessment, which is so the I'm first step. So, I'm not letting you get away with that. If I may, no, just, no, I just no, want to finish my, you may not get away with yet another so lie. The environmental you assessment see, you're misunderstanding the fact. You're underestimating Sorry, I'm going to jump in because nobody can hear. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm going to jump in and I'll give you each 30 seconds in turn so uh, you can go first and then Absolutely. Jan Harder after you. I think the first step is basically to pass the environmental assessment, allocate funding for the environmental assessment, make sure that it passes, push federal and provincial governments for funding. Uh, I know the federal election is coming up very soon, so that could be actually a topic of discussion. Uh, we could also push for it to be at an earlier stage, not to mention that there is actually a gap in public transit that we need to improve in order for us to have a safer environment and more sustainable option for everyone. Okay, Jan Harder, you can go next for 30 seconds now. The EA is already funded. And the fact that you even suggest and, and impugn my integrity by suggesting that I'd not support it in 2006 is laughable. But then I guess I don't know uh, where you were living at the time, but it sure was in Barhaven because you weren't living there until what time this year did you actually come to Barhaven? We'd all like to know. I fought very hard for that in, two, in uh, 2006. The vote was lost by one person who was away <coughs> in a cruise and came back. I was committed to it then, <coughs> I'm committed to it now, and so is Mayor Watson, and together we're going to get the job done. The current LRT expansion would be the best and cost effective if we put, uh, when last time we put that bridge on the Vimy Bridge. When we were having an old plan that a train will come across the Riverside South all to the marketplace, that would be the best uh, part. Sure it was. When we were putting the bridge over there, we could install the railway line over there so we can for the potential future railway. So town planning matters at this time. Now that was cancelled. Now we are looking to take this train it on the purely, road drove and uh, It the was high purely a political decision. As you know, that's when Mayor um, O'Brien became the mayor and he ran on a platform that was east-west and not the north-south. And as I said, it lost 13 to 11 the second time it was voted on. It cost us over $100 million. It delayed the Vimy Bridge. It delayed um, uh, transit, better transit for Barhaven, and which is why they gave us the uh, bus rapid transit, which is the only dedicated transit way in all the city of Ottawa, which will be easy to convert. Because no, I, you supported the decision that, in 2006. No, we are, no I we did are, not. I think we've literally we missed a train. Uh, you're lying again. Well, you're my, lying again just like you do at okay. the door. To again. my belief, where VRL is looking for expansion, They're this not. is the time we need to bring them on the table. We can get something for the residents. What they are looking for, it's no, a give and take. take. It's I'm a public sorry. and private partnership. I hate to jump in, but this is an old story. In 2000, it was proved to be not uh, acceptable to VIA not acceptable okay. uh, for That's that type time. of service. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. We're no, going to go back not. to Franklin Ipape. You get the final 30 seconds on that, quiet, please. Go yes. ahead. Like I said, this is a dream that is supposed to come true for Oron. <clears throat> We're hoping to have this train. But the problem is that the councillor is talking. We have no guarantee that we'll be running in the month of February. Reason people need to be informed. People need to be accountable because at the end of the day, the taxpayer are going to spend again money on this project that we're wishing to have, but you don't see the end yet. So by the month of February, we have no guarantee. That's my point. 
Okay, thank you. Let's move to the next question to Hattie West. Uh, would you support photo radar on residential streets as a way of improving road safety? Absolutely, actually. Um, actually, one of the major concerns uh, in Barhaven over, uh, over my canvassing excursion with residents has been uh, safety generally, road safety, rampant speeding actually. And I think this is majorly due to the uh, lack of <coughs> police presentation uh, or uh, presence in uh, Barhaven actually. Safety is definitely a priority. Uh, it's been a major topic of discussion at the doors. Um, we all know that the police in Barhaven is drastically underfunded and in result, as a result it's understaffed. Uh, approximately we have an average of one to two police officers as uh, Councillor Harder stated back in the past that you know patrol uh, all three wards of Barhaven at the moment and that's actually uh, not a very uh, sustainable solution for our community and we need to definitely do better so I will support our police forces make sure that the neighborhood watch program so is, everyone is now? improved. Well we have we don't have three wards in Barhaven we only have two, it's two uh, but I can tell you that I worked, I worked very <laughs> hard for uh, the police station that's being built finally one of the reasons that police station was um, was uh, delayed was simply because the LRT did not come to Barhaven and the Vimy Bridge was not built and so therefore they built in Huntmark but had nothing to do with uh, myself or at the time Mayor Shirelli not uh, supporting it. If I may interject, Councillor Harder, I think the police station is located on uh, on uh, Ward 22, uh, exactly. Ward 22. But you're so forgetting it is not that your that ward. used to be in my ward as well. I think it's yes. Councillor Kakish that actually worked on And you know what? No, I'm that. sorry. I was on the police services board for six years, <laughs> and I'm the one that voted on it consistently. And I also, as I said in my opening statements, I'm the one that actually recommended the location, given so its proximity come, to the bridge. So how come the last time we saw a speed trap in Barhaven was never existent? How come uh, the first that we week do not see school? any cars patrolling? The first how come we do not see any cars patrolling actually in Barhaven? The first First week of school, ask, to the, to we the, had to the viewers actually ask yourself that question. We had police Do you feel stationed at all of the schools okay. in again, Barhaven. Again, again, I'm, I'm going to jump in, and I'm just going to remind to everyone. Park. Please stop talking. I'm going to remind everyone that when both of you are talking at the same time, or three no people are talking at the same time, nobody can hear anything yeah, you're saying ahead. anyway. So there's no point to that. No, but you, so I just I will yeah. I will allot time to each of you so that you each can be heard by the people who are watching. So Jan Harder, you can have 30 seconds, and then we'll go to Hattie West. Thanks very much, Mark. And I want to correct the record again but again since Mr. West has lived in Barhaven the sum total of maybe months he probably does not know um, at your aunt or your sisters which we're not sure of either but I wanted to say that the very first week of school we did have speed traps in all of our school zones and as far as, far as photo radar which was the question I believe uh, Mark that you posed uh, absolutely supportive of it but unfortunately it's tied up right now with the bureaucracy at the province and it's been delayed I think that we should do a pilot project and use Barhaven we have 27 schools and absolutely <coughs> um, it's something that I support and in fact I would like to have um, the photo radar okay. lights on the um, all the intersections, all the major arterials. All right. Every day you see That's people time. running those lights. Hattie West, you can go I, next. I think with very low funding, I think with very low funding, we have very poor resources to be able to hire and train new officers, uh, and that also not to mention the the ones that are retiring. Um, I'm committed to supporting our police force. I'm committed to uh, making sure that there is law enforcement. I'm committed to improving our neighborhood watch program. I'm also committed to working alongside the community associations and school boards to make sure that we have a safer. Uh, uh, and more awareness campaigns actually with regards to different issues that contribute also to uh, safety like mental health issues and sexual violence and, and more than that. Uh, but I think uh, when we look back and reflect over Nepean, for example, in the past, we did have a full police department, we did have police headquarters, we had uh, community policing, and when we compare it back to Barhaven, if I may just finish, when we compare it back to Barhaven, we do not realize that it's the same image. So I'm committed actually to working on the same image. It, it is the time allocated. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, again, one at a time, please. One at a time. Franklin Epape. Franklin Epape. Excuse me. Franklin Epape. Go ahead, please. Okay, good. So, uh, as both of them, the, the problem we have is that we don't have enough cops in the world. That's 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 actually very true. And I was in the in the neighborhood just canvassing, and I had to, I had to stop on the road from Berrigan to Claridge. There, you have two schools there, and you have stop sign. 
no car just stop at all, which is a problem. That's why I totally agree that we need more policing in our neighborhood. But the problem is that I keep on hearing people saying, oh, we have to connect the police with the community, connect the police with the community. But which communities are we talking about? We're not talking about the communities of Barreven. Because normally what's happening right now is that the police are located in the neighborhood that you consider low income, not Barreven. So one of the main complaints we have right now in Barreven is that when we need the police, we don't have the police as fast as as we're supposed to have. So that's the main problem we have in Barreven right now. And so I think I'll give you the chance to say something. Okay. <laughs> of course, thank you. Go ahead. I will definitely support the uh, uh, speed cameras. And uh, I agree uh, to Councillor John, in, uh, sorry, John on this. And we need, for sure, more policing in that. I will definitely look for <coughs> increased uh, uh, police funding for, in that. If uh, we need... Uh, more presence. Uh, I, in other uh, debate, I heard that I like that idea that uh, speed enforcement, uh, sorry, speed enforcement police force, something uh, that we can uh, uh, hire some uh, on less pay, some police officers who can control the speed on that roads. And, uh, and second, I will definitely recommend that uh, the <coughs> community road limit, especially in the school zone, should be 30 rather than 40, that will also improve the safety on the roads also. And 30 is, uh, kilometers per hour is a recommended uh, according to the United Nations. Uh, and uh, I like Yes, sure. Yeah, go ahead. I, oh, sorry, yeah. because I thought we were, well, I thought I, you, you know, were giving, I'm, but then I'm you gave him a minute, so I'm I thought I'm just better. trying to, you know, give everybody a yeah. chance to speak no, no, and, just, and, and give the audience a chance to hear you because so you're... Over the, so, Mark, over the next um, five years, we're going to hire 400 <laughs> new police officers. Uh, you know, look at the task before us uh, from a policing perspective, from a community perspective, with cannabis now being um, uh, coming into effect uh, within a matter of a couple of weeks. We're not ready for that. And that's why we're doing all the consultation that we're going to be doing, and we have the task force together. I've been working on that with Mayor Watson and working with the universities, post-secondaries, and the school boards, because we need to understand. I don't think we really know what the challenges are going to be, but that's going to provide a whole new pressure, a whole new pressure to the... Uh, to uh, for policing, and I'm uh, I'm very concerned about that. What how we're going to deal in our parks? How we're you know what bylaw is going to do? Uh, a lot of questions, and that's what people are talking about, uh, and that they're concerned about. But in 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 Barhaven, the number one issue is traffic for policing, and I can tell you <clears throat> that we get the attention by people making the call. And, and having their say about where they live in the community. That's what really nowadays draws the police to, uh, to uh, various areas of the city. Schools are always going to be important, and okay. uh, that's, that's why they're time. high profile. Thank you. Uh, let's go back to Hattie West. I asked you the question, so you get the last 30 yes, seconds. I think, uh, I think the root cause, again, back to, to the original question, Mark, the root cause for uh, speed, rampant speed in most of our neighborhoods, actually, is the lack of police presence. Uh, so there should definitely be uh, an improvement and an amelioration on that topic, actually. Um, our community's uh, safety is really important to us, and we need to work all together for this. Um, I'm really looking forward to see the, uh, the new police station open up maybe in a couple of years, uh, but I think uh, we need more representation than that, Councillor Harder, so we're looking forward to this. All right, thank you. The next question is uh, for Atik Qureshi. Uh, gun violence has increased in Ottawa in recent years. It's escalated significantly. Uh, what steps do you think need to be taken to address that? Does the police budget need more money, for example? We've already been talking a little bit about policing so far, so let's let's talk about what some of the solutions are to rising gun violence. Yes, uh, to control the gun violence, we definitely need to increase <coughs> the police budget, and uh, we need to train our uh, police force in that manner they can ha handle the community issues well. Uh, for that, uh, uh, being uh, I'm aware of uh, different uh, communities, uh, uh, relations, uh, sorry, community uh, organizations, and I am aware of uh, the different demographic factors uh, uh, around the ward, I will encourage uh, for the teaching on the police force about uh, the different culture because most of the issues buried under the cultural uh, um, heap. 
So we need to look into that, and I will definitely support the increase. Okay. So again, it's it's open to everyone. I'm just going to remind you that there's lots of time for everybody to talk. So take turns, and I'll jump in if I need to separate you. So okay. Sergeant Maria Keane um, has uh, started in a new role. Uh, she's a longtime Ottawa police officer, and very much about multicultural, and very much about attracting a variety of people from all walks of life to become police officers with Ottawa Police. That's a great initiative. I've been working with our new minister, <coughs> Lisa McLeod who um, I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing and hearing from the uh, Ford government on how they will help us help our city. Uh, certainly we need new tools. But one thing, don't make have any doubt about it, we have extremely well-trained uh, police force. We have um, <coughs> invested a lot of money in the equipment and in the training for our police officers, and they are um, of the best in Canada at what they do. So the 400 new police officers we'll be hiring over the next five years are going to come in with training specific to the needs of the day, and certainly guns and gun violence, while not the largest issue in Barhaven, as I said, that's traffic. Uh, certainly for our city, it's very important. So what I can add, if uh, you can give me a chance, what I can say that usually nobody sees on the table, which is terrible, we keep on talking about community, 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 but we don't even know the communities that get involved. When we're talking about policing, yes, it's sure, we need to increase the budget of the police. There's no doubt about that. But that's not the only stuff to do. We need to actually help the police to get involved with the communities. We are working with the communities already, and there's a bridge between the actual police running on these tables and the communities that actually need the police. You're talking about our youth. The police itself was com complaints about the youth crossing the, bo the, the, the border to bring the rifles between the age of 18 to 24. They go across the brothers and they bring the rifle here to solve the problems. Are we talking about increasing the police? No, increasing the police is not the key problem. The key problem is to help the police actually have a real connection with our communities where we have all these problems. I'll give you an example. As a counselor, when you're invited in a little event, you have to be present so you can help the police do this connection because I sit with my friends of Compact all the time. We try to, we have been making events for the police to know the people living in this There's neighborhood. No we don't talk about Barreven most of the time because we consider like not a middle, not a low income area. So you talk about Kikwood and you talk about Vanier. But the problem we have is that. So I just want to remind us all that we are really in debate time. So, you know, it's nice that we're being respectful and, and, and listening to each other, but, you know, we are supposed to be in, in, in debate. So I want to make sure that everyone knows that over the years, and again, I was on the police services board for six years, we've had strategic initiatives, starting with uh, Chief Vern White, that have put, made sure that we have boots on the street. That's where we need the policing. And you've heard recently, probably from the mayor, one of his initiatives, <coughs> that he wants to make sure that the police are, in effect, not at the festivals, not at the, um, not at the road uh, um, uh, works that are being done. He wants all those police to be available uh, to be boots on the street. I'm, I'm comfortable with the budget that we have. I don't no, think no, we need I to add to it. I'm talking about the same stuff. I got cut and then you didn't even get my point, which is that we're talking to the police and that's the problem the communities are having right now. We don't argue about that because this is what's happening. The police try to contact the communities, but don't, they don't really talk to the lead, to the real community leaders to try well, to solve this to problem. Well, they talk to me and I'm a community leader. But you're the community had, leader. But you're the community had, uh, leader of Sherry... Barraven. You're the community leader of Barraven. There's no rifle running the Barraven Street. We're talking about people living in Vani and Kickwood. I think these are the neighborhoods you don't even go to. I don't, I don't know the last time people were kicking guns in Vanier. This, uh, in, in Barreven, this happened in Kickwood, in Vanier, and we are there talking to the community. This is where the police mm -hmm. has to make sure and they the interact with the community. Okay. So, Let's the police spend a lot of time. time. If I interject, um, I, we go back to the root cause again, the police presence. And I know Councillor Harder and uh, my colleague over here, Franklin, has brought good points, but I think uh, last weekend, for example, we did have a hit and run. It's the first time probably in months that I've seen 20 police cars in Barhaven. I think it's about the underfunding that we're going through, that we are understaffed on police. Uh, when was the last time actually we've seen a police car patrolling in Barhaven? That's another question. It's a this really morning? important... It's this morning. This morning, and I actually had our what? community police officer... Ever, ever since, Councilor Arvin, ever, ever since the police station... Today, ever since, talking to me about issues... So and you've seen them in your office, which is in downtown, No, I said I saw them on the street this morning, over in the Tartan area, near where... 
Franklin lives, that's, actually. That's a great accomplishment. I saw another one Ever? on Waybridge this morning. That's amazing. Because we have a very uh, I did not landing. See, I did not see, actually, Well, maybe you weren't there, but, but maybe you actually, don't know where those streets are either, uh, Eddie. Have, ever, have, since, yeah, ever, since the police, ever since the police station on Green Bank and Hunt Club actually got under, almost shut down, actually. It's if ever you run into an accident, God forbid, in one at a time. You, if you ever, sorry? One at a time, please. Go ahead, go ahead. If you ever run into an accident, God forbid, in Barhaven, uh, if you call the cops, actually, it might take six to seven hours and nobody would show, would show up, actually. No, and if, if, uh, if I may complete just for a moment. Only if and and if you were actually to call to call the cops, they would either come from Canada or from downtown again. Actually, I ran yeah. into a resident yeah. last no, week when I was canvassing who said, who said, actually, the resident said that her car, her car windows yeah. were smashed by a rock, actually. She called the cops at 8 p.m. Nobody showed up after six hours. No. She emailed you, Councillor Harder. To. She emailed you, Councillor Harder. She tweeted you and you did not respond to so I think that there's actually a lack of communication from the side of our leadership, actually, because she said she reached out to you multiple times on Twitter, and, you, on Twitter and by email, and you were not responsive, actually. She tried to call your office, she tried to send you an email, but you were not there. So Hunt so I think we need to address the issues of our for insurance. The insurance companies that pay for the services that we can have better service are the ones that get that information much faster. Back in the old days when we had um, you, you reporting at any of the, uh, at the stations at that time, you would take you're ha then taking police officers and putting them on administrative duty and waiting for them to fill out a report. Now, the insurance agencies get that okay. instantaneously, that's and time. that's good customer service. Uh, and that I place. asked you the question, so you get the final 30 seconds here. Yes, as I said earlier, uh, for police, <clears throat> we need to increase the budget, and especially uh, my plan is to in increase the budget for their uh, training on their cultural issues. They need to understand the each cultural uh, background because if we can curb that issue we can reduce the violence 50% uh, on the street and other 50% violence is due to illegal drug trafficking and we have to focus on that also where I am not supporting okay. of that. That's time, thank you. Let's move to the next question. Jan Harder, uh, I'll direct the question to you and then we'll open it up to debate after you start off with the first 45 seconds. Uh, you're the chair of the planning committee at the city. Uh, there are some residents who have complained that height levels, height level restrictions and community design plans have been set aside by the city and that buildings are going up that are too tall, that there's been too much of an emphasis on intensification. Uh, do you feel that the city should be more responsive to the needs of some of those residents who are raising those concerns? Well, as we talked earlier, we have invested billions of dollars in LRT and we have a policy that we uh, carefully established over the years that says that that kind of density should go along the transit corridors and so even in Barhaven for example you're going to be seeing that there's height we have an 18-story apartment building a 16-story one coming uh, we, we're going to have south of the Loblaws in our downtown area. We're going to have height there that we haven't seen before. But that's where our transit is, and that's where the LRT will go. And that's why we are putting the height and the densities there. But I started something called Building Better, Smarter Suburbs a few years ago, and it was to deal with we're putting too many uh, units per hectare. And so we've made some changes to that, and I'm very proud of it. It's Ottawa open to everyone now. The Ottawa Citizen actually published an article a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, that said between 2012 and 2017, 52% of homes that were built in Ottawa are considered intensification, which means we're densing our areas with population without thinking of infrastructure. And I think this is a one important point that I want to focus on infrastructure, wider Green Bank, wider Strandard that people have talked about for years, uh, not to mention the issue that we've been going through right now through uh, Stonebridge Golf Course, which was developed actually 30-something uh, years ago for people to enjoy a greener space. Uh, a lot of people have paid huge premiums between $60,000 to $170,000 actually ago. for them to be on a golf course, yet our councillor, uh, Jan Harder, supported an application to move forward with this development as a chair of planning. I'm someone who believes uh, if you're well, electing actually, a city councillor. Actually, councilor, I did not, and people you in, in Stonebridge, no, times, I'm sorry, times, I'm sorry, Hattie, but then again, you haven't lived there long enough to have any of the history. I, don't I actually was part of the planning there, for the Stonebridge I, I, I community. I was part, I actually was on Canopian Council when we planned that community. It's one of the most beautiful communities in, in Ottawa, and I say that often. This is a letter that I put out, very clearly states my position. Last week, actually, last uh, week, I stand months. with you. Yes, I was going to do that in July, but because the community association was trying very hard to get out to all the people and asking surveys and stuff, I offered to hold back and wait till now, which is why I did if that, Hattie. If I may interject, Councillor Harder. Sure um, you may. 
you've changed your position over four I times during not. this election. If I may just finish. Um, at first, you were saying that you had nothing to do with it. You could not, you could not do anything about it. You can't you stop to, an you, application you talk, you talk, from coming You talked to some of your, your colleagues and said that, thank God they're not developing the whole course. After the community, no, after the, com that, after that's the community meeting, actually, you said you, uh, you wanted to work on, you want to figure out working groups. And then, magically, two weeks ago, after I canvassed all of Stonebridge and spoke to thousands of residents who are frustrated, uh, you come up with this letter. You've changed your position three times, Councillor Hatter. Ashley Hattie, I think my turn now for the reality the check, okay? My turn to tell you that when I first heard, the very day that I heard, I spoke to the two people on the Community Association that I heard anything about any plans they had. I spoke to the Community Association president and the planning person that I work with on all the applications that have to do with Stonebridge. And every meeting that I was at, they were there with me. And yes, I asked Madame to withdraw the application. I also recommended the facilitator, which, which I had the president of the community association interview to see whether he was comfortable with the approach that this person, who is totally unbiased, is going to bring to the discussion. But the, we have no application before us today. Will Council, we have Council another Council one? Council Absolutely. Council we'll have another one. Council. Okay. We, 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 I'm going to jump in and I'm going to ask uh, Atik Qureshi to go next and then uh, Franklin. Town Biden. planning is for sure a big issue in our ward. Uh, it's been uh, Three weeks before Mr. Hadi put his nomination, I met the Stone Bridge Association, and I gave my support for them that what Matami has done is should not be done. It's a breach of their contract because they sell the land uh, to get a high lot premium, and if there is inevitable, then they should give the return to the residents for that. And this is my statement, which I already put to, to the associations. As far as the town planning is concerned, that is a real crisis in our ward. Our uh, roads being uh, made uh, for uh, temporary measures. So when we are building a community, we should look ahead for the future, not for the time being. Until and un unless there is an outcry you know about that, that, then we start uh, using the uh, widening the road, and then again that population faces the crisis where they are being limited uh, way to move out and congestions, congestions, and congestion every time. Okay. Okay. And uh, for a recent example, next. I will put that next. we run okay. the 95. Thank you. I, I just want to make sure there's enough time for everyone, so Franklin and Pape go next. We have to debate, but we have to make sure we at least understand and listen to each other. I was in Stonebridge myself, and the only person that I saw there that I think is Councillor Jed uh, Harder, she was there as well, where people were annoyed, upset, and angry regarding the fact that Matami was deciding what they were, or we, know, we all know they were deciding. We were there. We saw the frustration. So what happened is that they were able to stand like a community. And then obviously, I won't give uh, <laughs> Mrs. Hadley the credit, but at least she was there. We were able to listen to, listen to these people, and we saw the frustration of what was happening. What I'm trying to say is that we have to make sure we listen to the community. Listening to the community and make sure we help them when there's a real problem. And what we're talking now, everybody is talking about infrastructures. Everybody is talking about the, the roads. Of course, we have one of the biggest growing uh, world in, in, in Ottawa. But we can see the road on Green Bank that got widened. So we can give some credit to, to Mrs. Hardy as well. We have the bridge across the side when you're going on River Road. Yes, but... The truth is that the neighborhood is growing big, 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 and the infrastructure okay. doesn't follow. Is it my wrap-up now? Uh, no, no, let me, no, 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 let me bring okay. up one more, uh, one more point over here for the uh, town planning. Uh, we run a 95 on Kilbirni Road, and Kilbirni Road is not wide enough to run a transit uh, uh, route over there. People are parking on both sides of the road, and when bus is crossing, it, there is no space for any other traffic which coming from the other side. So this is a pure example of a bad town planning, that Kilbirni Road, if we decided that we run a transit route, it should be wider. When it was planned, it was planned okay. that Kilbirni and Golf Wings would be the, the, the routes that the bus would take. Right. not wide Gen enough Gen for the route, and uh, uh, we need so to I'm make it uh, again, parking uh, free for And uh, Hadi West, you can, you can talk for the remaining I, 15 I, I seconds. Read, I read several emails from residents that emailed you to ask about your position on the Madame development and you actually said you had no position you haven't seen the application I'm surprised to how this is, is knowing that you are the chair of planning actually so okay. my sense is that you've probably heard about this a year ago but I'm not understanding why the change of, of, Thank you. of Thank you. position you after get the last started. 30 seconds on this yeah, so go ahead. thanks very much and there's so much uh, uh, innuendo and fingers pointing on this. I am the chair of planning. Who better than me to represent you on a file the next time there's an application that comes in? 
Okay. I did ask Matt, it nope. is for my 30 seconds. Yep. I did ask Madam E to withdraw it. They did withdraw it. That doesn't mean that they can't come back again. So when these three come to your door and they say, oh, I'm going to vote with you, I'm going to stay with you no matter what, which I have said in my letter, I'll ask, tell you what to say. You say, what then? What then okay. when they do? What are you going to do then? That's time. All right, let's move to the next question, which I'll direct to Franklin Ipape. Uh, the city is about to undertake a ward boundary review in the next term of council. There are some people who point out the fact that there are wards with a population of less than uh, 30,000 and other wards that are much larger, like Barhaven, more than 50,000 residents. Uh, 60,000 is more than 50,000, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what changes would you make to uh, the size and uh, structure of uh, local government? No, what I think is that right now we have the perfect size. I think we have the perfect size. You have uh, 23 councillor city on the table. We have 23 wards. For me, it's the perfect size. But my concern, my real concern is that we have to make sure we care about our communities. It's not only the fact that we have to change the ward, that will be changing the infrastructures, that will be changing the road, the, the buses, the problem we have, and the community communication we don't have right now. We have to focus on the people that give us their voice when they vote for us. That's one of the main issues we have to bring on the table because some councillors, as we see, are not close to us. They don't pay attention to us and they don't know our main problems. That's what we have to focus on. Okay, Thank let's you. open everyone now on this I, subject. Uh, looking through my experience in canvassing with people, I, I think uh, the way we are is not bad at the moment, but should there be a review for boundaries, I would suggest uh, to accommodate better for the communities of Half Moon Bay and Stonebridge. Uh, Half Moon Bay, for example, is split amongst two uh, councillors and Stonebridge, probably two or three. Uh, the golf course is actually on one councillor's ward and then the, uh, the, some of the houses are, are divided amongst two other councillors. Uh, one of the main concerns actually of the Half Moon Bay uh, residents is that some of them, for example, in Kilburnie or Blackleaf, uh, the front of the house is in one ward and the back of the house is in another ward. Or maybe there could be house number one in, in one ward and then house number three but in another Hattie, ward. That's easy but to explain. That's, but That's easy if, to explain because in 2006, the last time we had a ward boundary review, I had 75,000 people and my ward was divided into five pieces. The Eagleson Park and Ride used to be in my ward. And one of the things that was wrong at that time is that the government of Ontario chose to respect the the uh, rural boundaries of Ottawa and that's why you have, I have uh, five councillors who represent almost a half or, le or less of the over 60,000 people. I represent a large Ontario city. I have always been in favour of reducing the size of council. Right now we have 23. Back when we had 21, which was in 2006, that time I think we could have gone down to 16 with the mayor would be 17. I think that with myself managing this large Ontario city with over 60,000 people, there absolutely is the ability to, and I think to better serve the public by taking some of the rural and mixing it in with some of the suburban and the urban and redefining the boundaries. Uh, okay. I think that we will be uh, well served and I think have a, a probably um, a council that uh, deals with more of the uh, important things that we have to deal with on I policies I, and I things like that. Boundaries, the most weird about boundaries, uh, to, to my opinion. And uh, I re, uh, re, uh, replan those boundaries. I think you know, 22 wards or 24 wards, one less or one more, that will be good enough for us. But we need to redesign the boundaries to make it uh, some good uh, identical or some more uh, 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 feasible for our for candidates to run a better canvas rather than there is confusion which ward is belongs to. Uh, which uh, area which belongs to which ward and uh, what we uh, what candidate has to do for that. I was actually just uh, trying to finish my point before, before Councillor Hutter uh, interjected, but I th what I was trying to say is if should we do an, a boundary uh, review, I would suggest actually to include all of Half Moon Bay, for example, or find a way actually to include it all in one ward or within the same ward, same as Stonebridge, because that leaves residents confused about what city councillor, what, which city councillor represents them. <laughs> Oftentimes I've heard from people on the boundary actually then when when they go to one councillor, they're slept to the other councillor, and then the other councillor will send them to the to the first councillor. So I think that's an issue. Uh, it's better to be all in one place so we're able to adhere better and accommodate better our residents and assure that they're satisfied with the service. So the word boundary actually um, is is 
challenged, if you will, by the urban boundary. And because we haven't done a ward boundary review in a timely fashion, and we haven't, um, we are now seeing uh, a rural council representing um, a few streets in Barhaven because we've grown beyond that. Um, definitely in this next term, we're dealing with all the big policy pieces, official plan, the ward boundary review, development charge review, the infrastructure master plan, the transportation master plan. You've got to have somebody who actually knows what they're talking about and has the experience to make those things happen, to get the roads into the transportation master plan in the order that we need them, something I discuss with Councillor Blay all the time. Definitely to um, make sure that we have representation by population as much as we can, because right now the way it is, I have one vote for over 60,000 people. That's not democratic, and that's why we have to make the changes. Unfortunately, they won't go into effect until the end of the next term. I think to making the boundary, uh, not only population should be considered, but the area should be considered also. So once the area uh, will be uh, in align with the ward boundary, people will have uh, uh, set uh, ease in mind when they will uh, go and elect their candidate. They will know which, which, uh, where their uh, uh, complaints uh, will uh, will be handled by which candidate and what they have to do for that. But they know that they always get good ac accountability and representation from me. People that come to me and have for many, many years, and that's why I'm hearing from so many of them the fallacies that are being told to them at the door by some of the candidates. And you that's why I'm not going to accept it, because that is like against my integrity, well, and I'm not going to allow that to happen. We're talking about the boundaries, and they, like I said in my introduction, we have to talk about the cancerous. We have to stop making, we don't even know our communities. I, will, I, will, I, will, I, I know want, my I, community. No, I Mrs. Hadda, I'm do. sorry, you don't know. I, I, invited, I invited you in an event, you didn't show up. So it, does, it means you don't know your community. I'm a community leader in Barraven. Some of your people were, sh were writing fake stuff on me on Facebook because they were surprised to see me running. I've been in this ward for almost 10 years now. I've seen the growth, I've seen the change. What it means to be a councillor, you have to know everybody. You don't, you don't just need to go and sit with the West community and they think you know everybody in your ward. No, that's false. The first thing a councillor has to do is to respond present when you get invited in Over, any other activity. Okay. Over they will 60, give you thousand people. You can't go to the everything. Oh my dear, you have to. I'm sorry, to. but you can't because you used you to also do that 20 years run. ago, my dear. I give you all the credit. You, you used to, to do that 20 years ago. A three and a half billion dollar corporation. We, we, with we, all we pride, due respect. What we pride ourselves with in Barhaven is that we represent 60,000 people with different backgrounds. I'm a community leader as well, just like you are. Are you? We in Barhaven? I am, actually. I don't think so. Um, we represent people from okay, different quickly. backgrounds and identities and perspectives and faiths. I think it's it's very inappropriate and un unfortunate okay. to call their their, their concerns fallacies, actually. Thank Thanks you. Thanks to you, Jen. No, Let's go back to... Fallacies. No, that's time. Thank you. We're going to go back to Frank Lenny Pape. Now you have the final 30 seconds on your own on this. Thank you. As I said, the boundaries for me are fine. The problem is the people that we give our votes, which is the main problem we have right now. As I, was, as, I was, as I was saying to my dear councillor, I have a lot of respect for her. You have to show up when the, when the community need you. That's the only complaint you're having right now. When we're running the doors, we have no fake information. We collect the information from people that are really upset right now about the fact that they don't see you. They send emails, you don't reply. Your team reply and nothing is done. That's my point. All right. Let's uh, go to the next question now, which will be for Hattie West. So let's talk about the city budget and city finances. Where would you like to see tax increases for the next four years? And how would you respond to the concerns that some residents raise that we uh, are putting too much pressure right now on social services and infrastructure and not investing enough in those areas? Absolutely. Um, Ottawa is actually ranked to be one of the highest municipal tax rates in the country. Uh, throughout my canvassing experience with residents, um, a lot of them have expressed that concern. They We've expressed also that Barhaven has become a place where it's onerous to live actually with a lot of financial burdens. However, they all agreed that a lot of them do not mind paying uh, municipal taxes, but they do not feel that they receive the quality and delivery of city services that they deserve actually. So we do have a problem with this. Um, I am not, I'm not in favor of trying to think of increasing the budget at any time that we have a service or something, a project that, that's, that's at hand. Um, I think we need to analyze the budget. We need to, to analyze the budget from the bottom up, and we need to, to figure out a way to, to focus on different priorities, actually. And if I may just continue, because I know my time is just about to, to be, uh, to yeah, be finished, can, but we'll I just want to continue. continue. Yeah. What's magical about 2%? Why not zero increase? In case 
A lot we of you don't know to, actually. If, if I'm in current no, current no, 2018 sorry, long term, the current seconds. 2018 long term uh, long you term tried, city level actually is 2.21 2. 2. billion dollars actually. This is a growing rate of 100 million dollars each year. In the 2018 I'm debt sorry, Mark, service but I'm not cost was to allow him to go 211 a million dollars actually. Doing. This There's, is from the operating budget, which is this segment. So everybody's going to get a chance to talk. So everybody should be. If it's a debate, it's a debate. Why don't we let him finish and then you can talk? 211 million dollars actually. Year. That's from the operating budget, which means it's from the taxpayers. It's from the taxpayers' money. So why don't we, instead of trying to always think about a way to increase the budget, let's find a way to actually shift our priorities okay. to different things and analyze the budget. All right. So uh, I find it month. interesting because as far as I can see from your background, you were the president of the uh, Student Federation of uh, Ottawa U. And under your tenure and during your time, you had a deficit of $3.8 billion. That I, got million. I also, it's I also noticed that now that the Ottawa University has uh, taken on, um, is doing a forensic audit on your board. On so for you to submitted, see, actually. yes, 14 days after you conveniently stepped down, you can't run for leadership. Leadership, leadership is about, about being accountable, always being accountable. When you are in charge, there's no way that you don't know, and for you to raise those issues... Are you, are, you, are you suggesting that I should not speak uh, out the truth if I'm a city councilor? No, no, are you, are you, you suggesting that I should not speak okay. out the truth? Well, I'm suggesting it's too convenient you step down so when you did and then filed it. We being, shall see what comes from the forensic audit. I also know that you I'm voted for 18% increase when the when there was that deficit and that it's some of your it's some of your decision. first of all the decision did not pass all right let's get back to the top. all right excuse me excuse me excuse me excuse me let's get back to the topic which is what residents can expect in terms of their tax increases for the next four years so who wants to go next on that so what, what, what i wanted to add because we're getting concerned about taxes and when you knock doors they'll be telling you about that we are talking about a possible increase of water going up of 4%, 5% uh, of wastewater, and we're talking about an increase on 5% storm water. So we're talking about a possible increase of 14%, which is huge. I don't know about everybody's family income, but mine is kind of stable. So when I see all this increase, that's when we get concerned. Not only talking about the 2.0. We don't mind, I think we don't even mind paying the 2.0%. I pay it, if, even though it's a 2.0, only 2.0, but we pay it. But the problem is that you have extra increase that we don't actually talk about that are there. So we have to be concerned about that. You we know have what? to give the priority uh, to uh, the residents when we make the budgets accordingly. And uh, what benefits them, that should be the uh, top priority. Uh, property tax of 2%, definitely, it is the most highest property tax in Canada. Uh, we need to, uh, we can cap it down, but we cannot make it zero because a city has to run on some finances. So making it zero is uh, just a dream. We can't just live in a dream. We have to live in the reality that I will definitely uh, keep it capped for 2%, but we need to look at the alternate revenues for the city. Unfortunately, 2,700 kilometers of Ottawa municipal boundary, we are not using it properly. We are not finding alternate uh, ways of revenues. We are putting all burden on the resident and uh, that is something, uh, uh, that is why I put myself to come forward. So I will, uh, being a financial uh, manager, I will definitely look into that where the wastage of money is. I can understand the number way much so, effectively than anybody else so here. And we can, I can bring cost effective the decision, solution for this. The decision you're going to have to make then for all of you that think that there's some magical way of doing this, we have to value, we have a, a city of almost a million people. Many people have different desires, different wants. So you're going to have to think about and be ready for it. Which, which arena person, do you I'm want to shut down? What swimming pool do you want to set, shut down? What park do you want to maintain at the lesser level? How far do you want to push back the accessibility investments? How far do you want to push back investments in affordable housing? It's very, very complex. You know, our city geography is so large. We have, like I said, almost a million people. But we have a geography that can choke a horse. It fits all of Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Montreal, and Toronto within our boundaries. Just imagine what it takes to run that. It's, it's the 2% or less, and we've done less, is, is, a, is a low figure, I think, 
what we used to do in the PN is that Ben Franklin would always go know what the um, uh, inflation rate was and he'd go a little bit underneath that. I think that that's a really good goal to set and it's always under 2%. So 2% would be the maximum. And again, if you really believe that you can save money, then you tell me which fire station you're going to close because we did that in no, 2004. Saving money is not closing the services. Saving talking, money to adopt a cost effective solution for the person. And you'll we, have to expound we, on that because, uh, yeah, of because course. what's your idea? Uh, we can't uh, just keep on you, uh, giving one contracts to uh, 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 one contractors and all city contracts are going don't. to uh, one direction. We, have we should have uh, some uh, tenders to float and we have we to do. get some competence. We have a that. very, yeah. we have a very uh, rigorous procurement policy and, and many that, people uh, Most of the infrastructure it. project is going towards one company. No. Okay. Okay. Like, most of the I'll jump in. Uh, Franklin Ipape, go ahead, and then you'll get the last 30 seconds anyway. So. Good. Like okay. Like all the big cities, we have to diversify our economy because if we don't do that, at the end of the day, we're just going to strangle the, the citizens because the taxes, the 2.0, we don't mind paying, but we don't talk about the rest of the increase that we have right now. Water, okay. wastewater, right. and uh, storm That's water. time. Thank you. Hattie West, you get the last 30 seconds. The city actually says that it's officially, it has the best credit rating possible, and that is not true. We're double capital A's when it's supposed to be triple capital A. The tax rate basically is the symptom of the problem, but what we actually have to address is the cause of the problem, which is quality of city management and financial management above, about which I have serious concerns. Uh, being a leader for me means you do not uh, hide fraud, you speak out of the truth, and you save uh, your, your, uh, the people you represent from deficits, which is exactly what I've done, Jan Harder, in my uh, time at okay. the Student Union. Thank you. Uh, let's move to the closing statements now. We're going to do those in the reverse order of the opening statements. Each candidate will have one minute, and we will begin with Jan Harder. Go ahead. Thank you, Mark. I've worked hard for you, your family, and your neighbors for over 20 years. I love what I do, working to make Barhaven a better place for all of us every single day. We are the destination in Ottawa for people looking to start a family. We've been the largest growth area of the city for about 18 years. But ensuring the needs are met of a large Ontario city, which Barhaven is, doesn't lend itself to someone with no experience. There is no on-the-job training, nor a manual. My record from roads to transit to recreation to public safety is one that I am proud of and one that has made life better for all of us in Barhaven. I have very deep roots in Barhaven. My family's, my immediate family has owned 24 homes in Barhaven over the years and I've raised my five children and Larry and I now have nine grandchildren, five of whom live in Barhaven, go to schools, play hockey, do all of the things that everyone else does in the community. I have a lot of experience. I hope I can count on your support on October 22nd. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next is Atik Qureshi. Go ahead. Uh, I will not say much uh, in my closing remarks other than that, uh, that uh, being related to finance industry, I will definitely bring the cost-effective solution for the city hall, which the city need desperately. Uh, I'm not a salesperson, I'm not a student leader, but I know numbers. And I can uh, get the results uh, from my numbers. I save money for uh, my clients, I save money for my employers, and I will save money for my residents also. And that is my uh, goal, and I will save and reduce some of your billing cost. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next is Hattie West. Go ahead, you have one minute. Thank you. Barhaven is a large ward. It's the fastest growing community in Ottawa and it's the largest ward in the city, actually. With that being said, I believe it needs the care and attention of a large city demands. We happen to be one component of the large city of Ottawa. And status quo is no longer something we can afford in Barhaven with the way it's structured. What makes for true representation is the power of genuine consultation with, con with constituents. And that means that we need strong, assertive, assertive, and informed participation at City Hall. I am the guy who can do this. All right, thank you. Finally, Franklin Ipape, you have one minute as well. Go ahead. Thank you. Barraven Ward 3, our home, our place. We can be saying stuff, but which one is real, which one is wrong. I, I said, in all the doors, there's something I always say. I give a lot of credit to Mrs. Jane Harder for the hard job she has done. But for us to ask her run as she used to run 20 years ago is unfair. Reason why I'm running this year, we need some change. We need a real change. As a nurse, you know I'm a nurse. I will listen to you. As a teacher, I will stand for you. 
as an entrepreneur, I will fight for you. It's time for us to focus on people living in Barabin. We need that. We need somebody that will talk for us. Nothing is most important when you send a letter to your community leader and to your counselor and she doesn't reply to you. This is a huge problem. We have to make sure we bring some changes in our world, and I'll do that for you. I'm ready. Merci la communauté francophone de Barreven. Je serai présent pour vous. Je suis déterminé à le faire. Bonne soirée. All right. Thank you to all the candidates for participating in our debate for Ward 3, Barhaven. Best of luck in the rest of the campaign. I'll remind our viewers that Election Day is October the 22nd. And that night, starting at 8 o'clock when the polls close, we will have coverage of the results right here on Rogers TV and on 1310 News Radio. I hope you can join us then to find out what your city government will look like for the next four years. Thanks for watching.